Well, hey, good day. It's Dr. D with another episode of Prisoners of Hope. Today we're going to be talking about the correct side of obedience. Ooh, obedience. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't they even take honor and obey out of the marriage vows? <laughs> That's one of our favorite topics as humans that we sometimes hate, but is a topic that all of us have to understand and take into our soul because understanding it will lead to a freer life. Now, isn't that paradoxical? <laughs> Wait, this is a two-part series. So here we go with part one, the correct side of obedience. Well, let's start off with the definition of obedience, okay? Obedience according to webster.com is compliance with an order, request, or law, or submission to another's authority. Oh, submission. <laughs> Most of my friends, they can't even say that word. They're like, As humans, we hate that word. But if we're under the authority of the correct person, then we will live a freer life. Now, isn't that funny? We're running away from something that we should embrace fully. That would give us the freedom that we seek. That's been so evasive in our life. Obedience. Enough of what Deborah has to say. Let's see what Jesus has to say. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. This kind of reminds me, I'm going to interrupt myself, sidebar. This kind of reminds me of that verse in the Bible and it goes something, according to the book of Deborah, <laughs> It goes something like this. A person who hears the word and does not do the word is like a person who stares in the mirror of and sees the image of themselves and then walks away and forgets what they look like. Back to John 14, 23, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teachings, not just hear them obey. My Father will love them and will come to them and we will make our home with them. Oh, how would you like to have God in your heart? That's basically what it's saying. You obey me, you keep my words. You come to me, you talk to me. I will make a home in your heart and you will have peace that surpasses any understanding. This is what obedience gets you. John 14, 23, NIV version. If you're on the YouTube channel, you'll see a graphic that came up of a man who's leaping over a huge gap and he's leaping from a dark area to a light area and the light area has a sign that says, welcome to the other side. When we talk about obedience, we're talking about in this particular episode being on the correct side of obedience. When you do obey, I call it the other side because other suggesting suggests that you're not as familiar with that side. Most of the time, whether we're Christians or not, we spend a lot of time on the opposite side doing the, your thing. And I did it my way. New York, New York, <laughs> your will. We spend most of our time on that side. So on the other side, I consider that you're in line with the obedience in God's word. Calling it the other side because of the time we spend on the opposite side of obedience. So let's explore a minute the correct side of obedience. What are some of the things 
that is happening on the correct side. First of all, you have to understand that you are moving from one place to another. So the landscape is not going to look the same. You are moving. On this side of obedience, you have decided to yield your will. You have decided, God, your plan, not my plan. Your will, not my will be done. And you are learning more how to fight your will from the old side. <laughs> because it's a daily renewing of your mind. It's not one and done. I used to think I was a bad Christian <laughs> because, you know, I would hear these people say, oh, I prayed and then I was sanctified and I was delivered. And I'm like, I prayed and I was not sanctified and I sure the heck wasn't delivered. I find myself doing the same thing, same old sin. But I found out that is a daily fight. Because that flush from the other side wants to invade that purity <laughs> that you have found. That protection you have found from being obedient. Since we are on the other side, which represents obedience, let's talk about what the atmosphere is like. <laughs> what is the atmosphere of the correct side like? First of all, you've got that, that little old pitfall, your feelings. Your feelings are pitfalls. You know, pitfalls are not a good thing. <laughs> when I used to live in Cali, <laughs> we would name them because they were in the road so long. We would have to watch out for Henry. Yeah, Henry got me the other day. Pitfalls is not something that is good. Your feelings Sometimes you feel so good. Yay, I am, I feel so good. I'm speechless. You continuously patting yourself on the back until your arms gets tired from that awkward reach or trying to toot your own horn. You feel good because you obeyed. You wanted A, but the Holy Spirit told you B, and you did B. And in that moment, you feel good. And you're saying to yourself, how's that a pitfall? I'm glad you asked. Hang on. In that moment, you feel good. But if you're truthful, and you might as well be truthful with God, because he knows your heart. You know, it, it being untruthful with God is like my son used to do when he was little. He would get in trouble, and he would close his eyes. You know, and I would be, I, I would be verbally punishing him for something he did wrong and he would close his eyes and this is what I would say to him I'm still here with your eyes closed God is still here if you hide your thoughts your feelings your prayers are full, full of pious words that mean nothing if you're angry tell him if you feel sad, tell him. <laughs> Don't hide your feelings. So in this particular example, I'm, I'm happy because I obeyed, I obeyed. But then you feel bad because you didn't get your way. <laughs> A sister and I were talking about that. Why, why does the good feeling not last? Because I wanted my way and I didn't get my way. And sometimes we go into whining. I ask people when they're whining, do they want some cheese with that wine? What kind of cheese would they prefer? And you're whining. You will take, you don't want to take no for an answer. <laughs> you keep repeating the same thing, the same demand, even though you were told that you can't have it or you can't do it now. <laughs> but you get very upset so on the correct side of obedience people are like oh it's all happy and I feel good and everything and the flowers come out and and I remember this movie Monster House anybody remember that movie Monster House there was a girl and she's riding her bike and her pigtails are blowing in the wind and she's like hi tree hi bush hi rock and then the Monster House a vine from the Monster House reaches out and pulls her bike into a hole she's like what 
<laughs> Sometimes we feel that way. Oh, I feel good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I followed what the Holy Spirit told me. Then you feel bad because you really wanted it. And the Holy Spirit told you no. And you can go into sad feelings too. Because you 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 didn't do it perfectly. You're just not enough. And I, I'll share that with you, you guys. I'm flaying myself open. I'm in the Bible app. And before I came to record this, for some reason, yesterday, I wasn't in the app. I was on my computer, you know, looking up Bible verses. But I hadn't gone in the app. And I have been in the app every 165 days. <laughs> And then when I got up this morning, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to have my coffee. I'm going to have my time with Jesus. Love, love, Jesus, Jesus. I was just going to have it. And I opened up the, the app, and I said, huh? Like the Buckster House girl. It said one, because it counts how many days you've been in the app. So yesterday, I was talking to the Lord. I was praying. I was praying for people, but I didn't open my app. I even went to church, even listened to a sermon. <laughs> but I didn't open my app. So it said one day. And I remember one time my sister did confess, because this is not the first time. She did confess the same thing to me. She was going, she wanted to call the Bible app and say, yeah, but it was, I started it a minute before the midnight. <laughs> because I just did, was not able to do it perfect. Now, who do you think that messaging is coming from? You see, because I should have put Satan. Satan's also on the correct side of obedience. Look at Job. So your feelings can be huge pitfalls. You feel, oh, I feel good. I feel bad. I feel sad. This is the same person. Are they schizophrenic? No, they're just human. And they have decided to do what was correct. This is what the atmosphere looks like on the other side of obedience. So our feelings can be pitfalls. And then the next point I want to make on the other side of obedience, the correct side, sometimes it won't look like we expected. God won't answer our prayer the way we thought. He'll do A, and we thought he would do Z or Y, or we thought it would be one, and he's like on the alphabet chart. It won't look like we expected. I want to cover an old fable. One of my favorite fables is about an old Chinese farmer. A farmer and his son had a beloved horse who helped the family earn a living. One day the horse ran away and the neighbor shouted, Your horse ran away! What terrible luck! And the farmer replied, Maybe, maybe not. A few days later, the horse returned home, leading a few wild horses back to the farm as well. The neighbors shouted, Your horse has returned and brought several horses home with him. What great luck! The farmer replied, Maybe so, maybe not. Later that week, the farmer's son was trying to break in one of the horses, and she threw him to the ground, breaking his leg. The neighbor cried, Your son broke his leg. What a terrible luck. The farmer replied, Maybe so, maybe not. A few weeks later, soldiers from the National Guard marched through the town, recruiting all the boys for the army. They did not take the farmer's son because he had a broken leg. The neighbor shouted, Your boy was spared. What tremendous luck. To which the farmer replied, you know, maybe so, maybe not. We will see. It's really impossible to tell whether th that anything that happens to us or something that happens to us is good or bad at the time. And that's basically the model of this fable. 
It's impossible to know whether the horse running away was bad, whether the horse coming back, whether the son was breaking his leg, not being taken by the army. It's hard to tell why you're going through it, whether it is good or bad for your future. But remember, God promises that all things work for the good. He didn't say that all things would be good. Because we live life forward, we understand it forward. But do we really understand what's happening? No, we don't. We live life forward, but we really understand it backwards when we look back on things. It's in the backwards we we get perspective. Things may look great at the start, but over time, they may not be what we imagined them to be. Similarly, you may feel bad about something, but someday it could be one of the best things that happens to you. Well, this is the end of part one and part two. We will continue what the atmosphere looks like on the other side of obedience. My hope is that this information about being on the correct side of obedience sinks into your soul and gives you a new hope for the future. Stay tuned for part two. Until next time, signing off, Dr. D.